Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be here, and it's an honor to, uh, to speak here in front of you all. Uh, my name is Ardian. I've been a believer in the Ahmadi religion of peace and light since 2012. And uh, I've been with uh, Abdullah Hashim Abu Sadiq, the Mahdi, who we uh, profess in, since uh, 2016. Uh, the religion that we practice is seen as a strange religion, and we are people who hold on to the fact that God has had many covenants uh, with the prophets and messengers in the past, starting from Adam up until today, with our founder, uh, Ahmed al Hassan, and uh, Abdullah Hashim Abu Sadiq. And, you know, for the most part, people ask, you know, when they see our religion, they always ask, okay, what is your religion about? What is it that you guys believe in? Well, the most important thing about our religion and our call is that we really believe that religion is pretty simple in, in, in the sense of belief. It really revolves around a man. So we believe religion is a man and that by following that man that is sent by God or is appointed by God or is appointed by the predecessor that the people have recognized, uh, by submitting to him and by obeying him and uh, listening to him, we are fulfilling our obligations as believers in God and as, uh, as believers uh, in the faith. So that is um, how we take religion. And on top of that, we also have this will which Massimo had mentioned, uh, this will that we hold on to and we believe in. It is the will of Prophet Muhammad in which he wrote on the night of his death, in which he lists out the names of his successors, uh, them being 12 Imams and after them being 12 Mahdi's. And uh, you'll find towards the end of the will uh, two names that, are, uh, that we have highlighted here, which is Ahmed and Abdullah. So, the very fact that these two individuals came claiming this will for the first time in over a thousand years, we therefore take them as our guides and as our leaders, much so how uh, Jesus claimed himself to be the prophesied Messiah in the book of, uh, in the book of Isaiah, how Prophet Muhammad claimed to be the paraclete, and so too uh, these two individuals have claimed the will of Prophet Muhammad and had declared themselves to be uh, the Mahdi's that uh, we should follow and, uh, and accept. So, you know, is it a guarantee? Like, uh, is, is it guaranteed that they are who they are? Well, according to one of the Imams from the succession of, uh, of lines from the family of Muhammad, we find that the sixth Imam of the family of Muhammad had said that this matter, this matter of the Qa'im and, uh, and the Mahdi, will not be claimed, or this will will not be claimed, uh, by anyone except for its rightful owner or, or else God is going to end their life. He, uh, their age would be cut off. So the fact that after a thousand years nobody has claimed this matter and has uh, and uh, Abdul Hashim Abu Sadiq and Ahmed Al Hassan had claimed it, uh, therefore they are the rightful companions uh, of the will. So, and over here, uh, Abdul Hashim Abu Sadiq in his book, The Goal of the Wise, he explains what a covenant is since you know, we have talked about how we are upon a new covenant. He says that a covenant basically means a will, for whenever a father makes a, a covenant with his son, or when he leaves with his son his will, in both cases, the covenant and the will are legal, de uh, legal declarations of the father's wishes in regards to the disposal of his, uh, of his property and affairs. So basically that means that upon this seventh covenant, we have a new relationship with God, a new deal with God. It's a big restart from the past covenants that have been uh, destroyed and uh, corrupted over time and broken. And because of this, a lot of people have found our religion strange, but we insist that uh, our religion being seen as strange was something prophesied actually by the founder of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, uh, in which he had said that Islam began as something strange and it would revert or go back to being strange. So blessed are the strangers, and you know many people they see that, and they've seen us as strange. They see that you know there's a lot of things that you guys believe in that doesn't seem to fit with uh, Islamic uh, ideas and belief and and uh, and theology. And you know uh, according to the Oxford Languages, when we look at the definition of strange, which I'm pretty sure everyone is familiar with uh, the definition of strange, but you know just for the sake of argument, we find that it's labeled as something unusual, surprising, unsettling, hard to understand or something that's not previously visited, or it's alien or unfamiliar. And that's simply 
uh, a definition that cannot be applied to modern day Islam or the followers of, uh, of the uh, Islamic religion because 25% uh, of the world population categorizes itself as, uh, as Muslim or followers of Islam. It's a religion that has been studied for more than a thousand years. People are familiar with it. It's not something strange anymore in our modern time and, uh, and era. And because of our beliefs and because of uh, what we practice and what we believe in, uh, people have persecuted us. And you know, it's something that uh, the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt said would happen, that you know, when the cotton rises or when Abu Sadiq pretty much comes, he would come with a new matter, a new book, and new jurisprudences or, or laws that would be difficult or hard upon uh, the Arabs or people with an Arab mentality, which has pretty much happened to these people here. They actually came from Middle Eastern countries, from North African countries, and Middle Eastern countries like Jordan, Algeria, uh, Iran, Iraq, where because of their beliefs, they have been heavily persecuted uh, in these uh, Muslim majority countries by the government, and they found their way in Turkey uh, to escape persecution, to escape uh, prejudice, but uh, when they had sought to uh, seek uh, asylum uh, in Turkey, uh, they were met with aggression and violence, and um, they were not welcome, uh, unfortunately. So what is it that you know, the people have found that they cannot accept from us? What is it that they see in us that you know, allows them to have this prejudice feeling? Well. One important symbol that we have, which uh, is very hard for uh, people of Arab descent uh, or the uh, Muslim majority countries to digest, is uh, our symbol. So this is our symbol. It is basically uh, the Star of David. And David, we believe to be a prophet and messenger from God. And uh, we inherit from the prophets and messengers their symbols and their teachings. And uh, it is a, pretty much a universal symbol that we believe to be uh, a map of the universe, uh, the physical and the non-physical realms. And in the middle over here, we have uh, the Arabic name ah, uh, Ahmed, which is uh, the founder of, of uh, our uh, call, uh, Ahmed al-Hassan. Uh, next, we have uh, prayer. Uh, you know, every religion has some sort of prayer and form of worship. And uh, in our call, uh, much like the Muslims, there are these five-time daily prayers from, uh, from dawn until uh, nighttime. Or the Muslims, they participate in uh, five daily prayers. But for us, the five daily prayers are more in an esoteric sense, dealing with uh, figures uh, in each day and age. So for example, the Fajr prayer or the dawn prayer is actually representation of the era of the 12th Imam, uh, Imam al-Mahdi. Uh, Dhuhr would be uh, for Ahmed al-Hassan. Asr would be a representation of Abdullah Hashim al-Sadiq, the second Mahdi. Uh, Maghrib and Isha for the third and fourth Mahdi, and the cycle continues forth in every era in which uh, the next successor would represent a, a new era, whether it's Fajr, Dur, Asr, Maghrib, or Isha. Uh, the month of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan, it's a holy, sacred month for the Muslims. However, we believe that the calendar that the Muslims use today, the lunar calendar, is false. It is a calendar that was, uh, we believe in, we uh, take as non-authentic. It is not the calendar that Prophet Muhammad had, had used, and actually it was a solar-based calendar. And we believe that in the time of uh, the third Imam, Imam Hussein, there was uh, an angel that actually supplicated after the martyrdom of the third Imam, where the angel came forth and said uh, about the Muslims at that time who betrayed their Imam, he said, may God not give you success in either fasting nor the breaking of your fast. And, you know, in our belief, we hold that the month of Ramadan is always in December, which corresponds to uh, the Gregorian month. So we have the Gregorian month here, but we also have our calendar here, the Hijri months. And as you can see here at the bottom, December corresponds to what we believe to be the month of Ramadan. Uh, the Kaaba. The Kaaba is a sacred structure uh, in Islam, but we believe that the Kaaba, which is situated in the present city of Mecca, is not the original Kaaba. It is not, uh, and it is also not the birthplace of Islam or the birthplace of Prophet Muhammad, but rather uh, the real Kaaba was actually situated in present day Jordan, but it no longer stands today. It's been uh, destroyed for more than a thousand years. And Petra was the original uh, city of revelation and the birthplace of Prophet Muhammad in our belief. 
Uh, the hijab, and as you've noticed, uh, our uh, adherents do not wear the hijab. It is something that was never obligatory. But it is a sunnah, or it is a tradition that if the people wanted to wear, they can wear. They're more than welcome to do so, but it's not something pushed. And it's not something that uh, we really care too much about. You know, a person can choose to wear what they like. If they want to wear the, the hijab or not, it's up to them, and it's uh, completely fine. Uh, alcohol. Uh, in Muslim countries, uh, obviously, alcohol is not a permissible uh, beverage. It's not something that uh, is, uh, is allowed. Uh, and we believe that to be the case with the Sixth Covenant, that it, uh, it wasn't stated that alcohol was impermissible for the Muslims uh, in their time and age. But it was due to reasons, uh, like social reasons, and it was due to reasons of uh, debauchery in society. But in the Seventh Covenant with Ahmed al-Hassan and Abu Sadiq, Abdullah Hashim, uh, we believe that alcohol now is a permissible beverage that people are more than welcome to drink, but obviously in moderation. Uh, the Quran, it's a holy text, and we believe that the Quran uh, was a, revel uh, a revealed book from God. But we believe that it is a book that is not free from distortion, and we believe that actually the Quran that's present between our hands today is actually uh, corrupted. It's been distorted over uh, time. And actually, even the, uh, in Sunni Islam, we actually find narrations uh, that point out to that fact where the companions, they were one day discussing it in this narration, they were discussing about uh, a chapter in the Quran called Surah Ahzab. It's the 33rd um, uh, chapter in the Quran, and it was asked uh, about how long it was. So the companion said it was 73 verses. But then the other companion said that he remembers that it was recited and that it was actually as long as the second chapter of the Quran, which corresponds to about 280 verses. So to, about 200 verses are actually missing in that uh, one surah, and so, uh, a, a verse called the verse of stoning is not even present in the Quran today, which this narration actually says used to be uh, in the Quran today. So we believe that the Quran uh, as a book uh, is missing great amounts of uh, verses that used to be there, uh, along with verses that have been corrupted like this one. Uh, there's a verse that talks about the cutting of the hands of a thief, whether uh, it be a male or female. Uh, it, originally, the verse in its originality is true, however, the word cut off was originally stained. So we believe that in the time and the era of Prophet Muhammad, if a thief was caught, rather than cutting the hands uh, of a thief, uh, we, uh, the Prophet used to take the hands of that thief and used to stain it with a certain dye that was extremely hard to wash off. And uh, that was uh, their punishment, was that they walked around society with the stain in their hands. Uh, prophets and messengers. So we believe in the same prophets and messengers of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. But we also believe that there are other prophets and messengers that God had sent to other parts of the world and other nations. So here we have some pictures and statues of some people who we recognize to be prophets, uh, such as uh, the philosopher Plotinus, Confucius, Pythagoras, Alexander the Great, Socrates, Buddha, and uh, Plato, and others uh, also uh, that have also been mentioned in the Goal of the Wise. Uh, the souls, and this is something uh, Sister Farha is going to uh, go over in great details, but uh, yeah, our belief in the soul is extremely important because uh, we believe that the covenant that God has with us today uh, is no longer about nationality, ethnicity, but rather it is about your soul. And we believe in a concept called the soul family, and we also believe in reincarnation, which Sister Farha will, will uh, gladly go over. And uh, we believe that this concept and this belief was prophesied to come uh, with the Qa'im of the family of Muhammad. Where Imam al-Sadiq actually says that uh, basically in the time of the Qa'im, the brothers in the soul world that come into this worldly life would inherit from one another rather than the brothers or the siblings that come into this physical life from the bodies. So uh, we believe strongly that the soul relation is more important than the biological bodies which uh, we all come into today. And you know, just to emphasize that point, all of these teachings uh, the people see as strange, and it's uh, it's been prophesied, as I said, and I just want to reiterate that that uh, Imam uh, Imam Abu Jafar, which is the fifth Imam of the family of Muhammad, had said, when our Qa'im rises, he will call the people to a new matter, just as the Messenger of God had called them to. And verily, Islam began as something strange, and it will return or revert back to being strange. So blessed are the strangers. Thank you all very much.